Okay, we're going to talk about nuclear chemistry. First, again, we're just going to review a little bit about uh, symbols, isotopes, atomic numbers, mass numbers. Okay. If you remember, the nucleus is composed of two nucleons. That would be the proton and the neutrons. Okay. The number of protons is the atomic number, the smaller number down here and the number of protons and neutrons together is effectively the mass of the atom and also the mass number. Okay. So, what is known as the nuclear charge? Well, as the name implies, it would be the charge of the nucleus and that would be equal to the number of protons as a plus. I will leave you to figure out nuclear reactions used in our own lives and then what is different about this type of chemical reaction. Um, it involves the nucleus as opposed to just the valence electrons as um, regular or um, normal chemical reactions do. Remembering about isotopes, not all atoms of the same element have the same mass due to the different number of neutrons in those atoms. They differ in physical properties such as density, rate of diffusion, um, and ability to be uh, deflected by an electromagnetic source in a mass spectrometer. If we look at uranium, there are three naturally occurring isotopes, uranium-234, 235, and 238. It is not uncommon for some nuclides of an element to be unstable or to be radioactive. Those nuclides are called radionuclides, and there are several ways that radionuclides can decay into a different <coughs> nuclide, and we will be discussing those momentarily. All right, so a nuclide is the nucleus of an element or an atom with a specified number of protons. Radionuclide, radioactive nuclei, and a radioisotope is atoms that contain radionuclides. So when we're talking about um, nuclear reactions, nuclear chemistry, we're we talk about different isotopes. So it's not just an element, it's actually an isotope of an element. An element with more than one proton, that is anything but hydrogen, and hydrogen one in particular, that isotope, they are going to have repulsions between the protons and the nucleus because remember protons are positively charged like charges repel each other so there are repulsive forces within the nucleus. A, something called a strong nuclear force is what helps keep the nucleus from flying apart. Neutrons with their neutral charge they play a key role in stabilizing the nucleus kind of, you can think of them as a buffer for the protons that are within that nucleus. When we're looking at radioactive atoms or radionuclides, it's the ratio of neutrons to protons that we'll find is an important factor. For relatively small nuclei, that is nuclei that are less than 20 uh, protons, if you look at this graph, this is the number of protons on the x-axis and the number of neutrons on the y. They've driven, driven, drew a line indicating a one-to-one -one neutron to proton ratio and they're showing us that in this region here, I don't know why they drew the circle so big, where the atomic number is less than 20, the um, nuclei are stable with a one-to-one -one ratio of a neutron to proton. As the nuclei get larger, okay, this shaded area is called the belt of stability. It is showing us stable nuclei. 
okay, and it identifies it here. So as we get above a atomic number of 20, we can see that the belt of stability um, goes away from that one-to-one -one neutron to proton ratio. So you need more neutrons to kind of buffer those protons and that repulsive force between protons. Okay. All right, so radio, radionuclides spontaneously emit particles and electromagnetic energy. We're going to watch just a short video clip. held together by the attraction between the positively charged protons in the nucleus and the negatively charged electrons. But particles with the same electrical charges repel each other. Why doesn't the nucleus fly apart? The reason it holds together is because of the strong nuclear force, one of the fundamental forces in the universe. This force operates between the protons and neutrons at extremely short distances. Elements with atomic numbers from 1 to 20 often have the same number of neutrons and protons. But elements beyond 20 need increasing numbers of neutrons to hold the protons together. Beyond atomic number 83, no number of neutrons is sufficient to indefinitely hold the element together. When there are changes in the nucleus of an element, it is called radioactive decay or radiation. The original nucleus of an element decomposes to form a new nucleus and thus a different element, releasing radiation in the process. There are three types of radiation. Alpha radiation consists of helium nuclei, two protons and two neutrons. Beta radiation consists of high-speed electrons. And gamma rays are a very energetic form of light, similar to X-rays. It is gamma rays that are particularly dangerous to humans and other life forms. Scientists and technicians must be very cautious when they come into contact with them. But nuclear reactions are an essential and natural part of our universe. The energy that we receive from the sun is the result of fusion that occurs when two hydrogen atoms fuse together at high temperatures. This releases energy that radiates outward as electromagnetic energy that we call sunlight. Scientists are working on harnessing fusion reactions because they are a means of producing a virtually limitless, clean supply of energy. We have even been able to create nuclear reactions ourselves by splitting apart the nuclei of unstable atoms such as uranium in a process called fission. This is the energy released in atomic bombs and nuclear reactors. Okay, so they talked about three types of um, nuclear radiation. We're going to talk about five, right? The first one is alpha decay. And that is the loss of an alpha particle, which is a helium nucleus. Keep in mind that it is written like this, but because it is just the nucleus, the charge is a positive 2. Okay, and I don't know exactly why they don't put the charge on the actual alpha particle, but it is more than likely when you're looking at a nuclear reaction, um, it is understood that this is an alpha particle. Note a couple of things in a nuclear reaction. The mass number, 238, and the atomic number of the reactant must equal the mass numbers on the product side and the atomic number on the product side. Right? So these numbers need to add up. If it starts off as a 238, 234 plus 4 is 238, and I don't know why it's doing that. Um, and then the 92 here is the 90 plus the 2 there. Got all that? All right. That will actually help you in, um, oh goodness, 
I'm experiencing technical difficulties. There we go. Um, that will actually help you um, in some of the standardized uh, chemistry tests. A beta decay is a loss of a beta particle, which is a high energy electron. Interesting thing to note in the symbol, you can either use the symbol the beta or just the electron. But notice this mass number, which is the number of protons plus ne neutrons, is zero. There are no protons. There are no neutrons. But again, we do see in the actual nuclear equation that the atomic number is conserved and the mass number up here is conserved and the atomic number is also conserved. Okay. Positron emission is one that may not have been um, talked about. And that is a particle but has, that has the same mass but an opposite charge to that of an electron. If you notice, again, atomic number is conserved, atomic mass is conserved. This positron emission essentially turns a proton into a neutron. Okay, and that, all of these, what it helps do is adjust that neutron to proton ratio to get an element, or I should say, to get an isotope back into that band of stability. Gamma radiation is really just the high energy radiation, and that almost always accompanies the loss of a nuclear particle. So you're losing energy from the atom in the form of gamma radiation. There is also something called electron capture, um, and this is where the actual nucleus grabs an inner shell electron and essentially turns a proton into a neutron um, just by capturing that electron. It's an inner shell because it is closest to the nucleus, so it's going to pull those electrons in. You don't necessarily need to know about electron capture, um, but I thought that it was interesting and wanted to include it. So the types of radioactive decay. IB is going to focus on alpha, beta, and gamma. Okay, I threw in positron emission and electron capture because they are, um, they exist, relatively common, you should know about them, or at least that they exist. Okay so, okay, so stable nuclei, if we look at this belt of stability, okay, this, this shaded area here, isotopes or nuclei that are above that state, belt of stability have too many neutrons. They would typically de decay by emitting a beta particle. By emitting a beta particle, we are taking a neutron okay, and making it into a proton, which would um, alter that ratio of neutrons to protons in favor of bringing it down into the belt of stability. Nuclei below the belt of stability have too many protons. So they're going to become more stable by either proton, positron emission or electron capture, really making a proton into a neutron and bringing the nuclei, nuclei into that belt of stability. Interesting to note was brought up in the video that there are no stable nuclei with an atomic number greater than 83. Nuclei with a large atomic number tend to decay by alpha emission because that brings down both the number of neutrons and protons. Important to note is that it typically does not go from a radioactive nuclei to a stable nuclei in just one step. It is going to undergo many steps to get there. Okay. A series of decays. This you do not need to know 
but I thought it was kind of interesting. There are some trends. Nuclei that have 2, 8, 20, 28, 50, or 82 protons, or 2, 8, 20, 28, 50, 82, or 126 neutrons, tend to be more stable than nuclides that have a different number. Even number of protons and neutrons also tend to be more stable than those that have odd numbers. Just interesting. Okay. Nuclear transformations can be induced, so we can make them happen by accelerating a particle and colliding it with a nu nuclide, and that's the particle accelerators, some of which are miles long on their track.